Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Time to dive back into the 47 globe tube amp. I'm really excited today to finish this wiring up and see what our voltages come out like. We've got most of this input tube wiring in place and I'm going to go through how I laid this out. First we went with this 9 pin double tag strip which to me worked perfect for this application and what I decided to do was to make two different ground lugs which are going to be this lug here and this lug here and then you can see this black wire here is connecting these two lugs together so those are both going to be grounds this is where the B plus is going to come in and we split the B plus with this resistor which comes from the positive and then it's insulated here it connects to this terminal down here and then this resistor jumps over to the tag that's right next to it and this is our 2k resistor so then we have this 22 UF cap that goes from this side of the resistor to ground and this creates the decoupling network between the B plus and the plate of the input tube so this then becomes the plate voltage this is our plate load resistor and it goes to the plate of the driver tube same thing down here on this end this is the plate voltage which we're looking at hopefully it'll be like at 235 volts then we have this 22k plate load resistor going to the plate of the tube so next I decided to make this tag here and this tag here the input for the driver tube and the amplifier and it's right next to the ground so when we use the shielded cable it'll be real easy to connect like the signal in the ground and then the signal in the ground very handy for those to be right next to each other so then from this pin to ground we have this one meg grid leak resistor same thing over here we have a 1 meg grid leak resistor that goes from the input signal to ground and then from this pin to the grid we have our 1k grid stopper that I like putting in amplifiers just to help eliminate the possibility of oscillations it's just a good kind of habit to get into so got a 1k grid stopper then you can see the resistors right next to the terminal to make it as effective as possible. And so the signal is going to come in here, go through this grid stopper to the grid. And then finally, we have the cathode, which is going to be this wire here. It comes up to this pin right here. Then we have our cathode bypass capacitor that goes from this pin over to ground on both sides and then it's kind of hard to see but underneath here you can see the cathode resistor which is our 2k resistor that goes from the cathode to ground so I feel like this turned out really neat on this side over here we have our two coupling capacitors these Mundorf 0.22 UF again from this side of the capacitor to the grid of the output tube we have a small 100 ohm grid stopper and then this is the grid leak resistor which is right at 500 K and each side has one of those and then again over here we have our 100 ohm grid stopper and our coupling cap and I use some contact cement to attach these to the chassis so they're nailed down here 
And then all we have left to do is connect this into the coupling cap to the plate on this tube. And then on this side, it's going to come down, go underneath, and come up to the plate on this tube. Then the last thing we have to do is I bent up some 18 gauge solid core wire like this. And you can see it's like bent like that on both ends. And it's going to go to this terminal like that and over to our power supply. And then I'm going to bend up another piece of wire similar to this a black one that will go from this terminal over to our star ground point to connect this to the main ground point of the amplifier. And then we'll be ready to power up the input tubes, check our cathode voltages, and then start looking at injecting a signal into this amp and seeing what kind of amplification we get out of these input tubes and see if they're going to be capable of driving these 47 tubes and see what kind of signal comes out of this thing. So let me get the power supply lines and these plate to coupling cap wires hooked up and get this thing powered up. Well, okay, so off camera I hooked up the B plus from this terminal right here and it goes underneath this other B plus which is the high voltage that goes over to the output tubes here and then this is the B plus voltage going to our input tube tag strip that feeds through these resistors and everything I went over earlier in the video then we hooked up the ground off this terminal. There's this terminal and this terminal with this little jumper here. Then this goes over here to our star ground point that we established over here on this power supply tag strip. Then I ran from the plate of each of these input or driver tubes over to the coupling capacitor and that completed the wiring for the input section of the amplifier. So I then powered it back up and started going through checking all of my voltages and again this was a design that I came up with because I couldn't find anything online showing using these old globe tubes for an amplifier at least the way I'm going to be using them and I calculated up all the values for these resistors to get the voltages that I wanted to see. And I was expecting to have to do some adjustments, but all these voltages came out almost spot on to what I was hoping to see. So I powered it up first on the Variac and made sure that none of the voltages were way outside of the range. And then I went ahead and plugged it into the line voltage using my isolation transformer and came in and checked all the voltages and the way I have this laid out this pin and this pin are both B plus this is our ground this is the cathode of the output tube that's the other cathode of the other output tube then we can measure the plate here we can measure the screen here. Again, the plate and the screen. And when I came in and measured, I was originally shooting for 255 volts on the B+, which would be here and here. And it came up to 262, which was super close. It's only 7 volts off from what I was projecting. We ended up with 255 volts on the plate. Of each of these output tubes. We ended up with one of these was 248 and one was 249 on the screen which is what I like seeing about five to six volts less than the plate on the screens and doing the calculations 
of the voltage drop across this resistor. I'm right at the milliamps that I was hoping to see coming off of the screen. So the tube's gonna be running nice and safe. Then on the cathode, one of them was 14 and a half volts, one of them was 15, and I was looking for it to be 15 volts. So just a little variance from the two different tubes, but that's real close to what I had calculated up this was going to end up being and what I wanted to see. So on the input side, right here we have the same 262 volts, and I was expecting to see a little more voltage drop across this 2K resistor, but instead of 235, we're at 250, which I'm fine with. I don't think that's going to be any problem at all. We have a 100 volt drop across the, both the plate load resistors. So we have 150 volts on the plate of the 27 tube, which I'm fine with. And then on the cathode, I was shooting for 9 volts and one of them is 9 volts and one of them is 9.5 volts. And so all the voltages came out right in the range that I was expecting to see. And that means all the tubes at idle are conducting the amount of current that I wanted to run through them. So at this point, I'm ready to inject the signal in this thing and hook up a scope on the output and see what kind of signal we get out of this thing. But I think I'm going to save that for the next video. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to build this as an integrated amp or whether I'm going to build this as a power amp that needs a preamp to drive it. And I'm going to decide that once I see what kind of sensitivity that I get out of these 27 tubes and how much swing we get on the grid of these output tubes. And I really like the way these 27 tubes look. And so if they don't have enough drive for these 47 tubes, I'm probably going to build this as a power amp so I can use a preamp to amplify the input signal. So for now, I'm gonna hook up just a hook, piece of hookup wire to here and here. Maybe just do even one channel to start with and hook the signal generator up to this pin right here. I might even use just some alligator jumper wire to feed the signal in here and see what kind of signal we get out here on the output transformers at the speaker jacks and see what kind of power this thing makes. So the other thing that I, if I had to do this over, I don't think I would have done the heaters for the driver tubes like I did. I think this was a mistake. I wanted to use this 6.3 volt winding, which are these green wires, to power up the heaters on the input tubes. And and since this is 6.3 volts, I had to put um, some resistors to drop the voltage down and also had to wire these heaters in series. So the instead of 2.5 volts each, they now have 5 volts because they're in series. And then these drop the 6.3 volts down to 5 volts. And these things make a good bit of heat. They're running at about 130, 140 degrees with my little infrared temperature thing. And when I first had just one resistor, it was running at almost 200 degrees. And I knew that was hotter than I wanted to see inside the amp. So I put one half size resistor on each leg to be the voltage drop. But again, if I was going to do this over again, I would probably add another, let me scoot this over so you can see it. We've got these, a pair of these 2.5 volt filament transformers. I would have put another one over here and either used a 5 volt to run these in series and then somehow use the center tap to equalize the voltage on the heaters or tried some other way of doing the heaters, but what's done is done. And with them in series, I had to go through about three different 27 tubes to find 
a pair of them that the heaters were matched enough where the voltage in series worked because these tubes were never designed to be run in series like I've got these run. So anyway, I'll show in a schematic how to do it differently than I did in this one. But since I've already got this wired up and I've got, you know, I glued these pairs of wires all in place and it's all, I mean, it really, I mean, it turned out, it really turned out neat. You can see how I got the wires run down here in the corners and everything. I don't want to have to redo all that. So I'm just going to live with it the way it is. But when I publish the schematic for this thing, I'm probably going to show using some other kind of transformer to power up the heaters on the 27 tubes. I think in hindsight, that could have been done a better way. So anyway, I think I'm going to wrap this video up here. The next one will be powering this thing up with a signal generator and a scope on the output and see what kind of signal this thing makes. So I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please subscribe to my channel. Please like the video and really hope in a day or two I'm going to get this thing on the scope, maybe even try to do this tomorrow and see what this thing does. I'm excited to see what kind of power this thing makes and see what you know, see how these 27 tubes actually work. So hopefully we'll have this thing up soon. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.